Hello and welcome to the video. This is my annual reminder of things to think about if you're going to be flying in autumn, winter or spring conditions. Now for those of you in the southern hemisphere, you don't have to worry about this right now. This is more aimed at those of us who are in the northern hemisphere who are starting to get the shorter days, colder weather, wind, snow, all that goodness. If you have been flying for a long time, none of this is going to be news to you. If, however, you have taken up the hobby in the last year or two and you fancy flying over snow-covered fields, then there's quite a few things to think about because the models and you won't perform in exactly the same way as they do in the bright, dry, calm summer months that you might have been flying in so far. Big things to think about that we'll get involved with is things like the battery performance, for example, uh, is really negatively affected in the colder temperatures. Batteries convert the chemical energy that's stored inside them into electrical energy, and that is a function of heat. It's how warm the battery is, kind of dictates how efficiently that transfer happens. A cold battery will not perform or last as long as a battery that's flying on a nice warm sunny day. Obviously fingers will be less nimble if you're flying in colder weather uh, that your fingertips tend to get quite stiff that means that some of the reaction times slow down a little bit. Moisture gets into absolutely everything. You can use things like conformal coating and other things as well but there's some tips and tricks I'll go through that in a moment. Landing areas will be full of water, mud, snow, or whatever. Uh, even on a fine day in winter, you'll find there's a lot of dew sat on the grass. So if you land in it, that water just gets sprayed up into every different part of the model. And also things like wind will affect how things like return to home works. Um, things like the GPS rescue like on this model here, will rely on the moment-to-moment -moment position of the model, giving it an idea of the direction that it's flying in. If your wind is actually pushing it to the side at the same time, that's going to make that less useful. That's why things like uh, iNav use stuff like a compass. So let me get into the slides and go through some of the tips and tricks. If you have any others that I haven't shared, do pop them down in the comments down below. First thing to think about, of course, is going to be rain and moisture. As I mentioned in the introduction, there's an awful lot more of that about when you are flying in autumn, winter and spring conditions. Wrap up warm, make sure that you take gloves that you can put on your hands in between flying sessions to keep the blood in your fingertips. My big tip is take a hand towel to the field, a nice dry clean hand towel and keep that handy. It's really useful for getting um, moisture off models before you put them down. If flying in really wet conditions then consider conformal coating. Uh, you can buy it in lots of different ways and spraying your electronics with it will help prevent the moisture getting on stuff. But I would recommend whenever you get home use some canned air just to blow any moisture that might have found its way onto the PCBs out and bring your models inside when you get back from the field and let them dry out in the centrally heated house for a couple of days before you put them down. It can be also very useful to take some kind of landing mat if you're using a multi-rotor to land on that will stop that moisture getting blown up everywhere and my other tip is if you land in somewhere muddy, uh, this was the flying field I was flying over for that AR Wing Pro Maiden. Uh, this was a necessity really because uh, I was desperate to get the video out. Lots of other reviewers had had the wing but were being very uh, nice. People like Andrew Newton for example being very nice about waiting for me to do my Maiden video first because I'd had a hand in the design of it and any other time I wouldn't have flown over something this muddy but you know what it was kind of beggars couldn't be choosers. We're about to enter another lockdown when I recorded that video. But if you do land in mud then unfortunately that mud is going to go everywhere particularly with foam models that aren't uh, covered in any kind of protection. It's going to kind of seep into even the little gaps between the extended, expanded polystyrene balls that actually make up the model. So if you're going to be flying in these conditions, uh, I personally, if you don't protect the wing and the foam on a model, I'd let it dry out uh, before you remove the, the mud, let it become dry soil and then you can kind of knock it off with a soft brush. I find trying to take it off while it's wet just pushes all of that grit into all the different parts of the model. That also goes for multi-rotors. 
there tends to be a lot of ferrous material, i.e. rusted stuff that's disappeared into the soil, uh, particularly in places that have been had buildings or uh, any kind of industry on them. And the little magnets on things like the multi-rotors are terrible for kind of sucking in those little bits of ferrous stuff so you better just kind of um, waiting for everything to dry out and using a soft brush to brush it away from things like the motors you don't want that stuff flying around where the motor magnets can suck it up the other last tip is if you are going to be flying this kind of weather covering something like a foam wing or plane with a little bit of laminate can be very handy it makes it an awful lot easier to just wipe off any mud or blech that gets stuck onto your model when you come down the field because invariably you'll land in the wettest muddiest part of the entire flying field that's just the way it works Talk a little bit about colder conditions next. Obviously, you as the pilot are going to be affected. Uh, your fingertips will uh, get a lot stiffer as the blood drains out of them. So I would use potentially a radio bag on a really cold day, but take gloves with you. Uh, think about things like hand warmers. I've joked in the past about using lipos that have come off models they're very slightly warm you can kind of you know put your hands around them and hold those but actually there's no substitute uh, particularly as you're getting older for just making sure that your hands are in gloves and you have hand warmers handy um, it just is a big difference between operating a model in 27 30 degree heat and trying to do it when it's minus five lipo and lithium ion batteries will perform a lot more sluggishly I would recommend take off 20% of your flight time. If your model gives you about 10 minutes flight time in summer, I drop that timer down to about eight minutes. Now, most of us are flying with FPV on screen displays with stuff like this. Keep a very, very close eye on how the battery is performing. Because of that sluggishness, you might not have the same kind of um, reaction from the battery when you ask a lot of it for punch outs and aggressive maneuvers so be aware of that as well some of the stuff that would save you bacon in summer might not work as well when it's flying in really cold conditions do remember that things get a lot more brittle in the cold particularly plastics so some of the stuff that is going to be completely happy surviving a crash on a warm sunny day might be brittle enough to actually break in winter if not break it might actually develop a crack or something that's hard to see so do a lot more pre and post flight inspection when you are flying in cold weather in case something did happen to the prop or one of the other plastic parts on the model uh, that means that next time you fly it might let go Denser and colder air will affect the way that the model flies. Colder air is more dense, so there is more for the propeller to bite against. So be ready for that. And the last thing I'll say is if you do get the opportunity to fly and take some footage flying over some fresh snow, I would go and do it. It is fantastic. It is a magical view, really, really beautiful countryside. And you can kind of fly, particularly with things like quads, right over the treetops and see all of the snow sitting on the branches and if you do it in the early morning then you have that fantastic sunshine as well if you want to do you know kind of video filming stuff uh, it is a great opportunity to get some views that you can't get any other time of the year other issue that we have, of course, is the shorter days and the lower light conditions. If you're going to be flying FPV, then get yourself a camera that is more sensitive in low light. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can fly, you know, when it's getting really dark, but it's just those instances where you may have a bright sky that's quite full of clouds. That means that the ground is actually in shadow. Cameras with lower contrast can struggle with that. So if you find that you're struggling to see where you are in winter months, then invest in a camera that has that higher dynamic range or wide dynamic range as it's usually referred to and gives you lower light conditions. There's loads of options for that. Check out my FPV cameras playlist. Make sure that you can easily see the home area when you're flying FPV. I or my spotter tend to wear a very bright orange uh, fleece when we're flying and that just means that if I'm flying FPV uh, rather than have to always rely on my spotter if I'm getting into trouble I can easily spot where we are in the field uh, the world tends to be shades of brown and gray in winter and having something bright will help you spot where you need to head back to if it's an unfamiliar area
And my last tip is keep the goggles and the camera warm. Don't transport them with the boot of the car where it isn't heated. If you go into the field, keep them in the car with you. That will make sure that when you put things like the goggles on, the, the lenses don't steam up immediately. And also things like the cameras, there won't be any of that moisture kind of getting in behind the lens. And it's a good idea potentially to bring some of the cameras in uh, to the warmer conditions, maybe bring it in the house and stick it in a spare bedroom or something, because in winter that moisture will get behind and it will just settle out and make the image all fuzzy. For line of sight, I would recommend fit nice bright decals or get yourself some LEDs and put those on. Uh, there are some really good kits available now, people like Menace RC. The cob LEDs, they're incredibly bright and you can operate and turn them on and off with their RC controlled switch as well. And I'd also recommend Fit, a uh, lost model alarm that has a flashing light. If you're flying, it always seems to be the way in kind of dust conditions uh, and the, the, the model lands and you can't quite see where it is in the scrubby field that you're in. Um, obviously, you've got things like the RSSI trick make sure you're familiar with other things like that. You might have the ability with analog goggles to use the lost model finder, but it really helps if you can actually just hear the beeping, but also see the flashing light. It can help you get the model back before you have to give up, call it a day, and never see the whole thing again. Last condition that was going to affect things is obviously the wind. The wind has a wind chill factor that's going to make you feel even colder. Be careful with models with a GPS in, um, particularly things like wings. The way that I set my wings up in things like iNav is I don't use the compass. And that's fine because as the wing is flying, the moment-to-moment -moment position allows it to calculate the heading. However, in really high winds, it could actually be going backwards, which means the heading is completely wrong. And that's why things like the GPS rescue stuff in beta flight that don't use compasses is also dangerous as well in really high wind conditions because it will just get pushed out of position, the calculations won't work, so be really careful with that. I would recommend if you're going to be flying in any kind of windy conditions, fit, calibrate a compass if the system that you're using will allow it, so RD plane, RD pilot, things like INAV will let you do it, uh, you'll have a much more reliable return to home um, in those conditions where there's quite a bit of wind about. Consider remaining battery time as well. Uh, it might be really quick going down the field when the wind is at its back. You know, you might be doing 60, 70 miles an hour at cruise, but then when you turn around and come back up the field, it might be 35, 40 miles an hour. Uh, and so be aware of that if you are um, or you have been flying and kind of using the half battery remaining to figure out when you need to head back for home. Apart from the fact that the battery isn't going to last as long now in the winter, give yourself a little bit more headroom for that because if you're flying into wind, it's going to take a lot more time to get back and it's going to use a lot more power to do it. So just be aware of that and think about the direction that the wind is coming in when you're flying at the field. Last couple of tips, uh, wind speed can change. I tend to find that one of the places that I fly, because there's lots of trees around, it seems to break the wind up. So when you're actually on the ground getting ready to fly, it doesn't feel too bad. As soon as you get above the trees, then you can feel how blustery it actually is. If you're not used to flying in windy conditions, be aware of that and be ready with the first couple of flights of the day. If it feels like it's a little bit too much for you, be ready to come in and bring it in and land. In my experience, trying to push it in conditions that are making flying challenging is usually going to result in some kind of crash. And if you don't want to spend a day kind of putting everything back together, Discretion is the better part of valor sometimes, particularly if you are a new pilot. And the last thing is always check the forecast for this stuff. The forecasts have been interesting in the past year here in the UK. They don't seem particularly accurate at the moment, but I would check the forecast for the day you're coming to fly, usually the day before it's getting pretty accurate. And if it looks dodgy, Personally, I tend to rain check that and go on a day where it's going to be better. I would rather go and have a really fun, enjoyable experience on a flying day than try and push it and end up with broken models and damaged equipment. And that's a personal choice. But for me, I would rather wait for a better day where I'm going to have fun because let's face it, that's why I do this.
So hopefully that's interesting and a little bit of a reminder for all of you about things to think about in the winter and particularly aimed again at those of you that are new into the hobby. Keep this stuff in mind when you go to the field. It's lots and lots of common sense, but it's surprised how often stuff like this catches pilots out. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.